Whenever I explain locking to someone, I often use the analogy of two children fighting for the same candy bar because it shows conflict and then it shows how we came to a resolution, good or bad, winner or loser. So I'm going to actually use a couple scenarios where I shamelessly use my children to show you different variations of conflict and how we can technically diagnose it after the fact. I have no intention of hyping them up on chocolate or sugar before sending them to bed. So I am going to use crayons and coloring as an example. I'm going to go ahead and flip over to the videos. We'll talk about what technically happened as soon as the little skit is done. And at the end, we'll talk about locking in general, what causes it and what influence you have over it. What did we just technically observe? Well, that was a good example of two applications going after the same table and getting rows it needed without interfering with each other. Different applications were coming in, grabbing the color or row that it wanted, and got out without interfering with the other. Lily, can I have the purple? Sure, just a second. In this example, we saw what really happens when two kids play together, and that is one eventually wants what the other has. And they were working well together until they both needed the same row or same color, which was purple. And when that happened, the moody tween is in a lock weight state. That's where she's sitting there tapping her fingers, hoping her little sister really is going to let go of that crayon which happens, the little sister lets go, the tween gets a hold of the color she needs, and work starts to progress as it was before. Lily, can I have the green now? I'm not done with it yet. Can I have it now? No. How about now? No. Fine. Well, if you're a parent, you can see the argument about the start. This is the same situation we had before, where both sisters are getting along great, grabbing the rows and the colors they want until we run into the same exact problem. Little sister's got a hold of the color that the moody tween needs, and the tween waits again, just like last time, and begins to wonder if little sister was telling the truth. Little sister has no intention of letting go of that row, and so the tween gets irritated and bugs out. Decides, I'm not going to wait anymore. This is called a lock timeout, and ends up returning an error code or giving up. And once that's done, she'll end up rolling back her work and starting off again to go grab the another row that she needs while little sister is wrapping up. Lily, I need the blue. I need the blue and the green. But I need the blue and the green. Give me the crayon. No. You give me the crayon. No. Give me the crayon. No. Give me the crayon. Dad! What? Says you won't share the crayon. Give her the crayon so she can get her work done. <laughs> this is where the arguing, stomping of feet, and groundings happen. In this case, we have two applications or two sisters trying to do roughly the same thing. Color the same picture with land and sky. Where the moody tween is using green to color green grass, the irritable little sister is using blue to make her sky. Now the moody tween wants to switch, wants to color the blue sky, but will not release that green crayon until she has a chance to color with both for a second and get that blue sky started where the irritable little sister is no intention of letting go of that blue until she can start the green grass. When you have this, you have a standoff or what we call a deadlock. And when that happens, DB2 or dad comes in and picks a winner and a loser. In this case, I told the irritable little sister she needs to learn how to share. So she has to release the rose she wants. And besides stomping off in anger and slamming doors, which will get her grounded later, she also returns a return code, the 0911 end, but passes on RC of 2, which means this was a deadlock, not a lock timeout. 
Once that happens, she releases the rows that she had and the Moody tween can pick up both crayons or both rows at the same time to finish her work before moving on. So we covered a little bit about the various locking situations. Now, I am not going to talk about what switches can be flipped and how you can configure things with the application to handle locking. That's well beyond the scope of this. But before we close, I wanted to talk about the big elephant in the room, which you will run into as a DBA, and that is the database did it. If there's locks, it's the database. That's not true. The database is usually a victim or the one showing the symptom. The problem is always upstream 90% of the time up at the application level. And if you think about it, it makes sense. The crayon, the row, that can't cause a lock. It can't do anything. Now, how you interface with that, how you interface or rules around that crayon can cause locking because sometimes they get violated or you're trying to do too much at once. So if you've got a ton of applications connecting and they're not being considerate of each other with reading, writing, and deleting, or they're trying to go after the same row, but their isolation levels aren't playing well with each other, or a developer overwrote how a piece of SQL is going to interface with the row once it gets there, and it's a rule breaker to the rest of the rule set that the application is dealing with. All of those can cause locks. There's a whole lot more around this and tuning and whatnot, but that's the main gist I wanted you to get. Well, that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe or leave me some comments, and I will see you at the next episode.